Hello everyone and welcome back to Happy at Home. I'm so happy you stopped by today because today I'm going to share with you a long-awaited furniture makeover. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how I gave my dining room table a makeover. So when we first moved into this house, we needed a dining room table and we bought one that had two leaves in it that it could expand really large. We could sit 12 people around it at Thanksgiving and it has worked perfectly all these years. It's still a solid, wonderful working table. However, from day one, I didn't like the color of it. It's your quintessential 90s oak table that I've heard many times over the years. People have the same exact table. And, you know, it has the function of it has been perfect for us. But it just doesn't work with what I've got going on decor-wise in my home. So needless to say, I knew I always wanted to give it a makeover. However, my husband didn't want me to do anything with the table. And for years, we went back and forth on the table issue. And finally, a year ago, he's like, go ahead, do what you want with the table. And I was like singing and rejoicing in the streets. But I never, I never got around to getting it done. So I decided this spring, it was time to work on this table. And I knew it was going to be a beast. Um, because we've had it for 16 years. There's a few scratches on it. But other than that, the top of it, it's absolutely perfect condition, so I knew the lacquer on it was very, very thick. So I knew that that was going to be an issue, but I w knew that it was worth giving it a try anyways. So uh, today, I am going to share with you the steps I took to change my old table and give it a new look that I absolutely love. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is the table that we're going to be working on today in all its former glory. So as you can see, it's in great condition. It just needs a little updating. So the first thing I did was dig out my sander. This one is made by Tool Shop, which I bought at Menards. Then using a coarse grit sanding pad on the sander, I went about giving the whole tabletop a really good sanding. My goal with this step was to hopefully take the first layer of lacquer off the table in hopes that it would make the next step easier. Once I had the sanding done, I wiped down the whole table, removing all of the dust particles. It was then time to apply the stripping gel. Protecting my hands with rubber gloves, I poured a small amount of the gel onto the table and then used a small paintbrush to spread it out evenly over the tabletop. I worked in small sections, adding the gel and spreading it out until the whole tabletop was covered. I allowed the stripping gel to sit on the table for quite a few hours to work its magic and then I took my paint scraper and worked on removing the old lacquer. You can see here that most of the gel has dried up and I had to use quite a lot of elbow grease to get the lacquer to come off. Some of the sections came off very easily and then others I had to really work at, but I just kept working my way down the table until the whole thing was done.
As I worked, I just made a pile of the scrapings, trying to keep most of it off the floor. Um, and then when I was done, I just picked it all up and threw it into a garbage bag. I then took a damp cloth and wiped down the whole table multiple times just to make sure that I had all of the stripper removed from the table. And this is where I hit my first hurdle. I could tell right away that sections of the lacquer had not been removed. So once again, I got out my stripping gel and applied it to the areas where the lacquer was still applied to the table. I allowed the gel to sit on the table for another couple hours and then once again I took my paint scraper and worked on removing the old lacquer. Once the scraping was done, I once again took my sander and using first a coarse grit sanding pad, I went over the whole tabletop. I then switched to a fine grit sanding pad and went over the whole tabletop again. It was then time to add the stain, so I put some plastic gloves on my hands to try to protect them a little bit from the stain color. And the stain I'll be using today is from Minwax and it is in the color Red Oak it's number 215. I applied the stain in small sections using a small chip brush. It's about a one inch brush and then I wiped it off right away. Then working next to the spot where I had already laid down the stain, I added another small section of stain and then wiped it off. I continued using the same process until the whole top of the table was complete. You may notice that when I am wiping the stain off, my section gets a little bit bigger. That is because I'm using my rag to not only remove the excess stain, but to also buff the stain into the areas around where I just put the stain down. I feel like this kind of gives me a better overall coverage without getting those splotchy marks that you can sometimes get when you're staining and you overlap areas. I'm not sure if this is the right technique at all because I am not very knowledgeable in the art of staining things but it seems to be working for me. So I just went ahead and kept doing it and it seemed to work out just fine. I gave the table one coat of stain and then let it set overnight. I could tell right away in the morning that I had some problems. As you can see here, there's sections on the table where the old lacquer is still there, but you couldn't tell when it wasn't stained. So now I have these splotches all over that I need to deal with. In hopes of rectifying the problem, I started out by hand sanding each little section until I had it pretty much down to the bare wood again, hopefully removing all of that excess original lacquer. I probably over sanded at this point, but my hands were already sore from all the sanding and scraping that I had already done on the table and I was really hoping to not have to do any more sanding. So I may have overdone the sanding on this section, but hopefully it will take care of the problem. Once the hand sanding was done, I grabbed my electric sander one more time. I once again started with a coarse grit sanding pad and then transitioned to the fine grit sanding pad. Once that was all finished, for good measure, I used this 3M sanding block in a fine grit sandpaper to go over the whole tabletop one last final time just to make that sure that it was nice and smooth. Once I had cleaned off the table of all the sanding debris, it was time to add another coat of stain.
I applied the stain just like I did before, brushing it on quickly and then wiping it off and moving in small sections, and it seemed to do the trick. I then moved on to the base of the table, and the first thing I did was to apply two coats of primer to the whole bottom section of the table. The primer I used was Bullseye's 123 Primer, which is my favorite primer of all time, and I just used a small paintbrush to apply it, waiting the two hours recommended in between coats. Once the primer was done, I added two coats of white paint to the base of the table. The paint I'm using is just a basic latex paint in a satin finish in a beautiful creamy white color. I applied one coat at a time, waiting the recommended four hours in between coats. Once the paint had dried, I went ahead with a piece of fine grit sandpaper and ran it along the edges to add a little bit of definition to the base of the table. I always love this part of the painting process because it just adds such a nice touch of character to the piece I'm working on. The final thing I did to the base of the table is to add a wax. Adding the wax will help tone down the starkness of the white paint, plus it will help the distressed edges stand out just a little bit better. I applied the wax with a piece of old t-shirt and I just buffed it in to all the painted surfaces. The final step was to seal the tabletop. To do this, I'm using Minwax's water-based polyacrylic in a clear satin finish. I used a paintbrush to apply the three recommended coats, allowing it to dry sufficiently and lightly sanding between each coat. And with that, my table transformation was complete. Remember how the table looked before? And now it looks like this. I am very much enjoying the way it's turned out. All right, so that is my new table. I am so excited. I love it so much. Now, truthfully, I have to say, it did not turn out exactly how I wanted it. I wanted the stain on the top to be a little less intense, um, but I couldn't quite make that happen. I tried a couple different things, but I just wasn't getting the color that I wanted, so I just decided to go with what I had, and I do like it. I think it is awesome. It's such a nice change from what it was before, and yeah, I just think it turned out fabulous and it was worth all of the work put into it just to give it a new life and make it blend a little better with what I've got going on in my home decor wise. So I think that is fabulous. It is no longer a sore thumb sticking out in my home decor and I think it's gonna look awesome and work so much better in my home. So I am so thrilled with it. I can't stop smiling. I'm so happy about it. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I would love to know down in the comments what you think. If you have any questions over the steps I went over or any of the products that I used, most of it will be linked down below in the description box. Otherwise, if it's not, ask me a question. I will make sure to answer that for you. So I appreciate you stopping by today. If you are new, please hit that subscribe button. And to the rest of you, I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye now.